I'm Nomad Brad. I'm currently living in a 2005 U-Haul uh, box truck. That's uh, a 12-foot truck, and I've been living in this one for a little over a year now. Uh, but I've been on the road for four years, and this is actually my third uh, third vehicle I've been living in. All right guys, welcome to the inside. So you are right in the center of my home. One of the first things that, that people always ask me is about this door. Um, this was an old U-Haul, and so if, if you ever ever rented a U-Haul before, there's not a pass-through that goes from the, the storage space up into the cargo space, or up into the driver's space of the rig. So that was one of the things that's kind of unique that I did, is I cut this access door, and it actually goes um, up into the front of the cab where uh, where the driver and passenger can sit. This door, I just found it at a local RV supply shop and it was actually a used door. Like they just happened to have this door that happened to be the exact right size for my needs. And so I find when I'm doing the van life and the van life gods are smiling upon me, sometimes you'll just get cool synchronicities like that. And then something else that's, that's a little bit different is my fridge setup. I have the chest style fridge, so it opens from the top. In previous vehicles, I had the traditional style front opening fridge. And what I found is, um, you know, when you're driving and bumping around, your stuff in the fridge gets all tossed around. And then when you get to your spot and you try to open it, like stuff all Always spills out all over the place but with the chest style fridge you just pack it right to the top and then drop the lid so it's super simple but in my build I wanted to have a way that I could also have counter space above the fridge where the fridge wasn't you know taking up usable space so what I ended up doing I put the fridge on a slider but it slides sideways and so if you want to get into the fridge you just slide it sideways and then you have full access to inside of it you can open it up, grab your goodies. I use the top of the fridge also as a counter space. So like when I'm cooking, I got stuff going on, then I can put my cutting board there or whatever. I'm Nomad Brad. I have been traveling in some type of vehicle for almost four years now. I love it and I will not stop. They will not stop me. <laughs> For me, I really felt like my traditional life started to control me. So I had I had all the stuff that people tell you you need to have. I had a business, I had a house that I bought, I had a fiance, I had cars, all that stuff. And I was so busy and so like just all the time rushing around that it, it, I got to a point where I just kind of had a little bit of a, a realization that like I wasn't happy and that I felt very out of control. And so it, w it was this slow integration process of like, I would take what little time I had off and I would go out to nature. Like I would go to the park, I would go to the river. And at first I had an SUV and I actually, my first van life experience, I didn't even know van life was a thing, but I just went to Target, I bought a mattress topper and a cooler and a bunch of snacks. And I just threw it in my SUV, I put all the seats down and I just drove out to the mountain. And I just spent the weekend in the mountain in my SUV with nothing, no phone, just disconnecting. And I just, it felt so good. It felt so good to be out there and just unplugged and sit under the stars. And I just kind of had this moment where I was like, this is how I want to be spending my life. You know, these are the things I want to be doing with my time. The cool thing about the U-Haul too is they have the, the grandma's attic, right? So they have this kind of spot that hangs over the cab. Um, some people put a bed up top. I chose not to because by the time I, you put like a six inch mattress, you can't really sit up in the bed. And I kind of wanted, you know, I like to go in bed and like hang out, read a book, you know, go on my iPad. So I wanted to have the bed be spacious. So I decided instead to convert the attic to storage. And I've been super happy with that um, for two reasons. I, I have sliding drawers underneath which gives me access to all my pantry items all my dry food storage my 
food containers, utensils, things like that. So I get really deep storage drawers. But then the thing I really like is up top, I have a full wide open storage bay where I can put long stuff. So like my tripod, my folding chair, I have almost seven feet of length up there. So if you had something really long, like if you had a long board or uh, inflatable kayaks or something, you could stuff it up there. So I like having a lot of storage inside that's dry and uh, it's worked out pretty good for me. I guess we can move over to the other side. The opposite side of my kitchen area is kind of the sink station. I wanted to have a nice sink. My first rig, I just had one of the really small, like basic shallow sinks and I could never fit all my stuff in to wash it. So on this one, I got, uh, the brand is Rivati, 21 inch, I think stainless, but it's super deep so I can wash um, all my dishes and I cook primarily with an instant pot. So I do all my food preparation in an instant pot and then I also use it to reheat my food. And so I needed to have a sink that's big enough that I can do all that inside. And so I, this sink works great for that. And then it's cool because it has a basket, like a, a drying basket. So you can like wash dishes or fruits or vegetables and then put them in the drying basket and then it just drips into the sink. Um, so I thought that was kind of a cool feature you don't always find. And then additionally, it has a cutting board that also sits up on top. Super convenient. It, with van life, anything that can be multi-purpose is always a plus. So this is like sink and drying rack and cutting board all in one. It's awesome. The faucet itself is super uncommon. Um, I went with a, with a drinking water faucet. And the reason for that is I like to be super conservative with water. And so... I wanted something like a traditional sink. When you turn it on, it just kind of you know shoots the water out. Or if you just crack it a little bit, then you don't get a lot of water pressure. So you have to kind of choose. But what I did is I went with this drinking water sink. And so it gives you like good pressure and a good stream, but it's a low volume of water. And then I also combined that with a foot pump. Um, I try to do as much stuff as possible without electricity. It's nice to not have to rely on electronics and mechanical things if you don't have to. So I have a baby whale gusher foot pump is what it's called. It's actually a, a marine pump. It's made for boats, for galleys and stuff, but I have it on the van. And so it's cool because you can just pump it with your foot. It gives you your water and it's a super conservative stream, you know, but it's enough pressure that you can like, you know, kind of rinse, uh, food off of dishes and stuff, but it lasts a long time too. This vehicle has 35 gallons of fresh water and it has 27 gallons of gray water. And so I have both those tanks mounted up underneath the box, which is nice because then I'm not using space inside to hold my water tanks. That is my water situation. It was just a process of figuring out how do I do more of this and less of, of the old life. And so it was, you know, it was a process. So I like told my business partner, I'm out, I'll sell you my half, put my house for sale, started selling all my stuff. You know, I literally threw away, when it got down to the wire where I was like, I had to be out of the house and stuff, I literally threw away stuff that I had been carrying around for like, since I was a child. Like I had binders of sports cards, you know, I had like bobbleheads, all this just stuff, right? That you carry around. And I literally just took it to the dumpster because I was just like, I don't care about the value of it or what money it might bring me. I just want it gone. I want to cut the ties of this material world. So for me, it's, I've always been really good at, at changing quickly. And if you ask one of my mini ex-girlfriends, uh, they would tell you it's a problem <laughs> that I uh, change very quickly. But for me and my lifestyle, and especially living the van life, um, being able to change quickly is important. I like as much as possible to have everything accessible and easily accessible and also where you can just look at it. So like for cooking and things, um, I like to have all my spices and sauces and things right in front of my face. So I built two shelves, uh, one on each side of my kitchen countertops and that's where I keep my vitamins, my supplements. This is uh, turmeric powder, uh, Celtic sea salt, 
I have a spirulina chlorella blend uh, that I mix in with my green drinks that I drink every day. And then this is actually glycine, which is like a supplement you take before bed. So I got all my like feel good potions over here and then I got teas and hot sauces on the opposite side. So that was kind of a last minute add on where I was just like, you know, let's maximize the space and uh, get a little more storage going. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with, with how this turned out. You know, and there's, there's pros and cons to everything. And after my third build, which was this one, you know, I kind of built everything based on fails from the other two rigs. So there's not a lot I would really change about this setup. I, I enjoy it. So on this side of the rig, I have kind of a computer workstation slash eating station. I wanted to have a big open space where it can be multi-purpose. I do do a lot of computer work and video editing that type of thing and then also you know eating and cooking so I, I found this table actually at Home Depot it's not it's like the only thing in my van that I didn't build myself it's a sit stand adjustable height desk and so it was really affordable and it's like solid metal it's a pretty good piece but I love it I use it for storing all my stuff it's got a couple of drawers in it that you can slide open I can store my laptop and all my pens and pencils and stuff inside and so this is kind of my creative space and my eating space. In general, with the theme of the rig, I tried to do kind of a minimalist vibe. I wanted things to feel open and not cluttery and not too packed out. So I tried to leave the walls pretty open. I could have put, you know, shelves and storage cubbies and stuff, but I feel like I have enough things that I need in my rig. So I left the walls pretty blank, um, aside from this little photo montage that I put up. Basically, you know, the first 2022 will be four years. So this is almost four years of traveling um, that I've kind of recorded starting with my first vehicle, you know, up to my box truck. But um, I like to look back and just think about all the crazy places I've gone and the stuff I've done and the people I've met. And uh, it's been a good journey. So it's kind of cool to see those reminders on a daily basis and, and think back about the life you live. So money on the road for me has been uh, it's been interesting. So I, I haven't had a steady, consistent job, you know, in the last four years. It's literally just been picking up gigs here and there. Um, one cool thing is about a year and a half into living on the road, I ended up picking up a job as the videographer for Bob Wells um, of Cheap RV Living. You might know, you might have seen his videos on YouTube, uh, but he's a pretty big account. So I traveled with him for like nine months. Uh, in my van and just filmed his van tour videos and his like product reviews. I have an instant pot review with him up on YouTube. So um, that was something that, you know, I landed that job. It, it was posted in a van life Facebook group that he was looking for this videographer. So one thing I tell people is until you get into van life, you won't even know the possibilities that are out there. Like every other gig that I've had since then has been, has come up from meeting somebody on the road or some kind of connection that I've made while doing it. So I feel like you really have to get into it and then the universe will kind of deliver opportunities for you. So I had to cut in the windows. That was one of the most challenging projects just because the window I bought, it like didn't come with a template. And so I had to kind of make my own template and I cut it out with the Sawzall and it, I wasn't super graceful with it. And so it like, it was a bit of a hack job, but I got it in there and I sealed it and trimmed it out. So it looks pretty good. But um, I did cut in the windows on both sides and that was, uh, that was a bit of a challenge. So one thing that I was missing from my previous builds was a closet. I really wanted a place to hang clothes. And so that's something I decided to incorporate in this build. And so the upper half is a closet where you can hang clothes and coats and stuff. And then the lower half, I was gonna do like drawers, but I ran out of time. <laughs> and so I didn't finish the drawers. And so I just hit the road and I stuffed all my clothes in it. And then like six months into it, I found these little like cubby or these little uh, containers on Amazon. And so I put my, my I, it's kind of cool because I have one for each thing. I have like one for socks, one for underwear, one for t-shirts, but I have all my clothes stuffed into these little cubbies. And then uh, I have some bigger storage on the bottom, some bigger items. So I'm kind of happy with this piece. One thing that I really enjoy about the process and about van life is everything it, that I've done is 
purpose built and it's built specific for like what I want and the space that I have. So it's not like, you know, traditional furniture buying, you know, you can literally customize how big you want the shelf, where is it going to go, all that kind of stuff. So I really enjoyed the building process because I'm able to create exactly what I want. And so that's what I did with this piece here. And then also on this side, I'll show you down here, um, I have a, I do have an emergency toilet. So I have a, a pee bottle that I use, that's pretty regular, but I have an emergency toilet. You know, in, in three years on the road, I really have only used a toilet in my rig a handful of times. You know, if I'm like out at an event or something where there's not, not really bathrooms, but otherwise I, I kind of always find a toilet or I'm deep enough in nature that I use nature's toilet. So I really don't have to use it often. Um, but I do have an emergency, it's a five gallon bucket with a lid on it and then it has bags you put in. So, you know, if you need to, then you have that available and that's just right down here. The main thing I'm working on right now is a new website. It's uh, vanliferx.com and that's a spot for everybody, old van lifers and new van lifers to kind of meet up. Uh, it's got a classifieds where you can like buy and sell rigs or parts. Um, and then the biggest thing I'm trying to do is kind of have a, a place for community to meet. So it's a spot um, where it kind of lists all the different events coming up throughout the year. And then people are kind of sharing their stories, sharing their rigs. It's just kind of a social spot. So that's really what I'm focusing on right now is kind of bringing the community together. And so I'm, I'm looking to promote this website as a way to do that. So I'll talk about kind of the back half of my house. The first thing I'll actually mention is this wall here. And so this vehicle, when I purchased it, it has the roll-up door, right? I realized I didn't want the roll-up door. I wanted a traditional, you know, home style entry door. And so most of the videos I saw online, people remove the roll-up door and then they build a complete wall out of wood and frame in the door and all that. So in this case, I was in a hurry. And so I decided to leave the roll-up door. So what I actually did is I left the existing roll-up door, I put a sheet of plywood on it and a bunch of glue and shot in a bunch of screws to kind of hold it in place. And I cut the, the cables that, that work for the roll-up and I removed the upper spring mechanism. But that's it. So this is the original roll-up door. It's just, I left it in place. So I thought that was kind of cool. It saved me a ton of time and materials because I didn't have to go and then buy a bunch of wood and then recreate this stuff. So that's something that's unique. And then this leads us to the bed bench situation. So I wanted to have, of course, a comfortable bed uh, that was big enough for a couple people. But then I also wanted it to be a space I could use during the day as well. So what I did here is I did the double slide out benches. And so you can find these, they're pretty common on on YouTube, um, but basically it slides out and then it's a, it's a bench during the day and then at night it's a bed. And it's a full size mattress, uh, six inch memory foam mattress, and I just cut it down into quarters and I used, uh, all you need is a really sharp kitchen knife, like a big one, a big long kitchen knife. And if you get a new one, like I went and bought a brand new one at, at TJ Maxx, it was like six bucks and uh, it just cuts right like butter. So you can cut right through the mattress it's clean, it doesn't leave a bunch of debris. Turned out pretty cool, I think. So this is literally, uh, you know, two minutes and I'm gone from bed to daytime seating. Um, so I love it. And then the only difference is you have to put away your bedding every day. So like my blankets and my pillows and stuff, I put them up above in the over cabin storage, which is fine, I have plenty of room for it, but that's kind of the only thing is that you have to put away your bedding every day, but it, it converts pretty quick, which I think is important. So underneath I have all my tools and then I access it by sliding out the, sliding out the bed. The, you know, the one drawback, everything has pros and cons. So the drawback is that the bed is right by the main entry and exit point. So, you know, like if you wanna, if you set up your bed and then you wanna go outside or come in or something, you kinda have to crawl over the bed, which is, it's fine, it's totally doable but it's just one of those things um, opposed to like a bus design, you know, where you enter in the front and then your bed is always permanent. So you always have a bed. Um, in this situation, if it's daytime and I wanna take a nap or something, then, you know, you do have a couple of minutes, you gotta convert your benches into a bed. So it's just one of those pros and cons that you have to be aware of. So in this setup, I decided to 
hide all my solar and electrical components. I haven't done that in the past. I wanted them to be easily accessible. Underneath this sink, I have extra storage. I have a blender, I have a juicer, I got some rice, but I also have all my solar stuff. So I have a 40 amp. I went all Renogy products on this build out. I've always used Renogy and I love their stuff. It's affordable and it's good quality. So I have a 40 amp uh, MPPT Renogy Rover charge controller. Um, I have a 2000 watt Renogy PureSign power inverter, and that's been more than enough. I can run my Instant Pot and my blender at the same time and power my laptop and it never trips out. So it's a good, it's a good size. And then underneath this platform right here is my battery storage. So I went with AGM batteries on purpose. They're way cheaper than lithium. And because space and weight was not a concern for me, so I went with those batteries because I have plenty of space to contain them. So I have two 200 amp hour um, AGM batteries, which gives me about 200 amp hours of usable battery. So for me, it just made sense to go AGM. People that enjoy lithium, I'm happy for you, but I'm not one of those people. And if you're considering AGM, I think it's a great technology. Um, so that's what I'll say about that. All my battery is recharged by solar panels on the roof. And then I also have a 110 plug-in. So I can plug in an extension cord to an outlet and that will recharge everything. And then on the roof, I have two 300 watt solar panels. Two 300 watt panels gives me 600 watts of solar and it's more than I need. I never really run low on it. So it's been great. A lot of people look at this as their retirement plan, but I'm looking at this as a lifestyle. So I don't really plan on quitting. I plan on traveling and making friends and just living this life till I die. So I always tell people, if you're feeling called to try it out, you should definitely do it. Another thing I'll tell people is it doesn't have to be forever. Like it, van life doesn't have to be, I'm leaving society and I'm you know, gonna grow out my hair and I'm never coming back. It could just be an extended vacation or it could be a transitionary phase in your life where you're winding down from one life path and then picking up another. So, it, you know, there's many different ways it can fit into your lifestyle, but if you're feeling called to nature and to the, a sense of freedom and, and disconnection um, from the, where you're currently at in life, I would definitely say try it out. If you're feeling called, give it a try. You can find me on Instagram as nomadbrad503. So thanks for coming. Thanks for checking out my build. I'm super proud of it. It's been three builds in the process and I finally think I nailed it. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, reach out. I love helping out people and uh, you know, whatever I can do to help you uh, increase your happiness on the road. Mm -hmm.